flux that was more typical of the kind of energy flux our ancestors would have experienced. How do you make people, how do you fatten cattle? You make them sedentary. Then their appetite mechanism goes completely awry. Uh, I believe in intermittent energy balance and surplus. So I, I have feast and famine days, days when I'm extremely active, days when I, I engage in languid rest. And basically, I, it's like every third day that I have uh, a pretty chronic, uh, uh, an acute uh, caloric uh, deprivation. So I do practice caloric deprivation, but I do so intermittently, more like our ancestors would have uh, done, and I think more like our, our genome is, uh, is uh, geared to do. Now, I actually have a low glycogen uh, content in my muscles. I'm not one of these guys who believes in, like endurance athletes and some strength athletes, they, they, they recharge the muscle glycogen almost immediately. Well, it turns out that turns off gene expression and it curtails the adaptive response from the, the training that uh, you've, just, uh, you've just practiced. My hormone flows are not in, not in conflict. I don't... If we go on, I, I don't know what that means. I'm hoping other people would also appreciate. What does it mean to replenish your glycogen, and what does it mean to not replenish your Okay. Most bodybuilders, for example, will, as they leave the gym, will consume a, a protein and, and sugar concentration in order to create a, an upregulation of the glycogen content of the, of the muscles that they had just burned in some kind of anaerobic exercise session, which depletes glycogen in the in the muscles. Endurance athletes, as soon as they come in from a long bike ride, they'll guzzle one of these carbohydrate uh, drinks and try to replenish the muscle glycogen that they've, uh, they've expended. They're shutting off the gene response, down-regulating down it, at least. And my hormone flows, I, th I feel, are not in conflict with one another. Uh, Luigi mentioned yesterday that if a, a cell is getting is in the is bathed with inflammation, or it's getting a tumor necrosis fac, uh, factor signal, and at the same time a proliferative signal from IGF-1 or something like that. That cell doesn't know what to do. It just may uh, go into uh, apoptosis. It may not. So, the outcome that that I've experienced is that uh, I have a very high lean body mass, and uh, my BMR is quite high. I can, so I can do nothing and expend an awful lot of energy. When you weigh 205 pounds, uh, I'm four months short of 69 years of age. So uh, I, don't, I don't try to uh, restrict so much as I can use my energy expenditures to create the same kind of caloric imbalances that can be accomplished through uh, caloric restriction. Notice that Stephen was surprised when I said those, uh, those underfed uh, organisms were actually exercising because we know that this is what happens. If you under, uh, you give people less than adequate nutrition, they become more active because that is in fact the response, the evolutionary response to a lack of food is to increase activity to, to forage more or to hunt more. I have a very low heart rate and, and blood pressure. My of, of extremely low insulin. It's so low it's outside the range for the lab. Also very low IGF-1. So my practice is not a proliferative, uh, uh, encouraging type of practice. Uh, I went to an Olympic doctor who, who de deals with a lot of uh, professional wrestlers and uh, football players. And he looked at my uh, a lot of my parameters, and he said, uh, you can't possibly have that much muscle mass and have such low IGF-1. And of course, the problem is very simple. It's uh, these other guys are suffering overnutrition because they're constantly trying to remain in positive nitrogen balance, and they're actually, uh, their energy intake is far in excess of what their requirements are. So it is possible to have, I think, fairly substantial amounts of muscle mass and still uh, have uh, both low insulin and low IGF-1. Yeah? Can you remind me what UCP3 is? Uh, I would, would, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped that. Yes. Uh, 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 yes, brown adipose tissue. 
is bat, brown adipose tissue. It's thought to be simply a residual tissue in adults, but in fact, studies show that what altitude you live in the fjords of Norway determines how much BAT content uh, you have. BAT is pure thermo thermogenesis. It uh, doesn't make any ATP. It expends every bit that it, uh, of energy that it gets in uh, generating heat, and it is heat that is generated without the reactive oxygen uh, species, that uh, 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 full ATP generating uh, 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 energy. Uh, if the mitochondria generate uh, ATP, they, they typically produce far more reactive oxygen species than, than does B BAT. Uncoupling protein 3 is, uh, is found in the muscle. Exercise uh, increases the expression of that protein, and it is uh, it also uncouples the stage three respiration, so that it in fact generates more heat than it does ATP. Very low reactive oxygen species are are produced when you uh, use the uh, the U the UCP3 uh, in the muscle, and of course when I'm working out really hard and eating a full diet, I just throw off waves of heat. And uh, that's heat that is generated not, I'm not worried about the rate of living theory either, by the way, I think it's uh, simply a statistical correlation, it makes no sense otherwise. Uh, but I'm actually generating uh, uh, heat flow without, react react without generating free radicals or very, a very low level of free radicals. So it's very easy to stay lean uh, under those circumstances. I also have a low, uh, because it's primarily an anaerobic form of activity, I have a very low ROS uh, uh, loading on my system. I, use, I do very little endurance uh, type of work that generates uh, uh, enormous amounts of free radicals. And my cross-linking is very low because of some of the nutrients I use and the kinds of stretching routines. Uh, I haven't even given you the theory yet. Let me just keep going for a while. Just a stupid question. Where is brown adipose tissue? I should know that. What part of the body? Along the scapula, for the most part. Uh, it's also in the thorax region. Uh, it's found m more prominently in infants than in adults, but it is, in fact, not just a residual tissue. It does, it does work. Uh, and I have a very high fast twitch uh, muscle component rather than slow twitch because of the kind of activity I do. And it turns out that that's the most expensive, metabolically expensive tissue. It uses six to eight times as much energy to produce uh, activity as does slow twitch muscle fiber. By the way, anaerobic metabolism came well before oxidative metabolism. It's the most ancient form of metabolism. Uh, and it turns out that fast twitch fiber has gotten a bad reputation. It actually consumes, uh, it's, a, it's a free fatty acid sink that uh, works in a very indirect way, but it's very efficient at disposing of uh, fatty acids. So basically I try to live in a way like, like Stephen's wild type of mice. I, I try to express the wild type of gene even though I live in this sort of civilized uh, world. This is just simple game theory describing, I won't go into it in any detail because it just, it just informs my practice. It is not something I literally believe in. But a far from equilibrium system is a system of coalitions of cells that sustain life, take in energy, export uh, entropy into the environment. It lives at a, very, at a very high information rate. Think about a living thing, it leaves a trail and that trail is so complex, there's no algorithm that, that could compress the information in that trail that's less, of less length than the trail itself. That's the no notion of uh, incompressible uh, complexity. A living thing lives at that kind of high information rate. The, the, and, and so I try to do that. I try to live you know, a life that's full of novelty and variety and live at a high information uh, rate. Now, the idea about subcoalitions is that a liver cell lives in a neighborhood relative to a heart cell. All the cells are closely related because they're genetically from the same stock, 
But in fact, they each have their own agenda. And the cells that are the most likely rogue cells in the body, among, uh, among others, are the adipose cells because through a mass action effect, they can shut down the flow of, they can repartition re nutrients, direct them from muscle and through, by creating insulin resistance and using the fact that different organs are, there's a hierarchy of insulin resistance in the organs, they can succeed in directing a lot of the nutrients that's coming into your system into fat rather than into other uh, kinds of tissues. So uh, mu uh, fat is one of the, certainly one of the key factors in the development of insulin resistance. And by the way, I didn't, I didn't see much mention either of the role of exercise in caloric restriction studies. Clearly, exercise is a hidden variable there. Uh, and secondly, I did not see uh, much discussion of the role of the reduction of body fat, so important, uh, in managing glucose levels and bringing down insulin resistance because fat is a very metabolically active tissue, tumor necrosis factor, and a variety of other factors hormones come from, uh, are secreted by fat, and it actually succeeds in redirecting nutrients uh, to the uh, uh, organs in accordance with uh, their insulin sensitivity. So the, 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 the nature of humans is they're these complex adaptive systems. They live somewhere poised between uh, order and chaos, and that is basically uh, captured by the notion of uh, power laws. And I'll show you the intermittency that comes from power laws in just one moment in the, in the very complicated uh, energy environment of the uh, Paleolithic. Uh, 